Hi guys and welcome to this video on how to rip DVDs into single files, MP4s or AVI files that you can play back on any device. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating this on a Mac but the software that we're going to be using, uh, Handbrake, is also available for Linux or Windows. Uh, the first thing you need to do is go to the Handbrake website which is handbrake.fr It looks a bit like this. Uh, once you're there click on the download button and you'll see the various different versions available. Uh, we'll go ahead and download the version for Mac OS. All of these files hosted on SourceForge. So we'll save that. And then once it's downloaded, we'll go ahead and run that. Now on a Mac it's just a simple case of dropping it into uh, dropping it into your applications folder. On Windows and Linux the process will be slightly different. There you go, it's copied into my applications folder. And then it's just a case of running the software. And you see the first thing it does is prompts you says, well, where's the file that you want me to copy? So I've already inserted a DVD into this uh, into this laptop, so we'll just double click on that and click open. And you'll see what it will do there is then it will look through the DVD and it will map out where all the chapters are and it will map out all the subtitle files, all the little bits of director's commentary, all the little um, little vignettes that go with it just takes a few moments depending on the DVD okay and we can see what it's done is identified that the DVD is the film Monsters vs Aliens um, in the title drop down box here it's already selected title number 9 which is 1 hour and 30 minutes 28 seconds long which stands to be the main feature film but you can also look at all the other little bits of footage that are on the DVD so some of these will be menus some of them will be um, little shorts and things like that and previews so we'll go ahead and stick with that one uh, it'll also show you if there are multiple angles on the DVD it'll ask you which chapters you want to record so we want 1 through to 25 which is the last one and that gives us a total duration of 1 hour 30 minutes 28 seconds uh, it will then ask you where you want to store it. On this I'm just going to store the file on my desktop. You can store it anywhere you want if you click the browse button. Now it's going to ask about what sort of file we want to create. Let's have a look what we've got here. On this version, the OSX version, we've got MP4 or MKV. I would recommend sticking with MP4. Um, most devices will support that these days. Um, MKVs, although they are wildly, widely supported, a uh, few devices do not like them. Um, and we can specify whether we want to make it a large file size or web optimized so that it's a small file that can be uploaded or whether we want it to be um, sized for the iPod 5G. Okay, look at these two options at the bottom. We can select the video codec we're going to use. We get a choice here of H.264, MPEG-4 or MPEG-2. Again, I would recommend sticking with H.264. It seems to be becoming the web standard at the moment. We can choose different frame rates if we want to make it a, um, a smaller file size or if we need to maintain a different frame rate we can but we'll just say that select the source. Uh, audio we get to choose from uh, the original English 5.1, uh, English for the visually impaired or English with director's commentary. I think we'll stick with the original one there. We're going to use uh, AAC Core Audio, which is the original codec, uh, and we can choose whether we want it to be mono sound, stereo sound, Dolby surround, Dolby Pro Logic, six channel discrete. Um, if you're going to be using it just on something like uh, a mobile device, you might want to just go to stereo and reduce the file size a bit, and you're not going to notice any difference. I'm going to stick with Pro Logic because that's what I use at home. We'll keep the other settings the same. You can play around with the bit rate of the audio, that will have a small effect on the file size. Uh, 160 should be perfectly adequate. 
Next we'll go to subtitles. Uh, I'm not going to include any, but you can choose to include any subtitles that are held on the DVD. If we go to the advanced settings, there's lots of stuff in here that you really don't want to be messing with. If you're not really that um, experienced at doing things like this, it's probably best that you leave these alone. Uh, and finally, you can select uh, where you want to put chapter markers. So with your final file, if you're using it with a media playing software that supports chapters, you can skip through the chapters the same as you would be able to on the DVD. So that's all that looked at. Now, what we could do, if we have more than one optical drive, we have more than one DVD in, we could queue this job and then we could look at our queue. What I'm going to do is just click Start. And what that will do is it will take the files on the DVD and it will convert them into one M4V file, which is then going to drop onto my desktop. Now that's going to take some time, so I'm going to click Start and then I'm going to fast forward a bit so that you can see the result. Okay, so there we can see that the uh, the video that we input has now been encoded. Your handbrake queue is done. So if we click OK, and we can close handbrake. And you see on the desktop here we've got a file, monsters underscore versus underscore aliens dot m4v. So if we double click that, that should open up. There we go starts playing automatically and if I go full screen skip in a little bit you can see there's essentially no loss of clarity in the picture whatsoever So there you go, uh, a free piece of software in Handbrake used to uh, encode any DVD into uh, an M4V or MP4 video file that will play back on almost any device these days. Thanks for watching guys.